Today we're going to be rebuilding a top end on a WR250F. The motor and steps shown in this video are pretty much the same as the YZ250F and the YZ450F, but always refer to your service manual. This is part one of our two part video. We're going to need a few standard tools and then our service manual for this job. It's very important that you start with a clean bike, that way when we're doing this rebuild no dirt or any other particles fall into the motor. So the first part of this rebuild is we need to just get everything out of the way so we can work on the motor. We're going to remove the seat, the tank, and we're also going to remove the side panel so we can remove our muffler. Once that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and blow everything off once more just to make sure we don't get any dirt or dust into the motor as we open it up. The next part is we're just going to remove the top motor mount. There's five bolts that hold these on, two in the back and three in the front. Once we get those out of the way, we can just take both sides out. Once those are out of the way, the next step is to remove our spark plug cap. And then we're also going to remove the cylinder head vent hose. Pull that out of the way. And then the next thing we're going to do is just remove the valve cover. So there's two bolts that hold that on. I'm going to just remove those and then we can pull that off. Make sure you're not letting anything drop down into the motor. Once that's out of the way, the next step is we're just going to work on removing the carburetor. So we're going to loosen the rear clamp on the carburetor. And then we're going to loosen the two lower subframe bolts. And then we're going to remove the top subframe bolt. And with that bolt removed, we can just let the subframe drop back and out of the way. That'll pull the boot off the rear of the carburetor. Once that boots off the carburetor, we're going to loosen the front carburetor clamp and work on removing the carburetor. So once that front clamp's loose, we're going to need to remove the hot start cable and our other throttle cables. And then we also need to disconnect the TPS sensor and we can pull that carburetor down and out of the way. The next step is we just need to drain the antifreeze out of the motor. So we're going to pull that bottom plug. Then we also need to loosen the cap on the radiator to get it to drain. Once all that antifreeze is out, we're going to put the bolt back in and tighten it down now. And the next step is just to remove the header. And once that's pulled, we're going to move to the other side of the bike and work on removing the cam chain tensioner. On these Yamaha ones, there's a bolt in the end. We're going to loosen that and then remove both bolts holding the tensioner in. And we can just pull that tensioner out. So now we're going to get a piece of wire. We're going to wrap that around the cam chain and then hook it up around the handlebar. We do this so the cam chain doesn't fall into the bottom end. Once that's secured, we're gonna work on removing the bolts from the camshaft caps. You wanna loosen these in a crisscross pattern in order to avoid damaging the camshaft cap, the camshaft, or the cylinder head surface. Once we have all those bolts out, we can go ahead and pop the camshaft cap off. Watch for the dowel pins. There's usually two in each cap. And then you wanna make sure that you get the locating clip as well. Make sure that that doesn't fall down into the cylinder head. We're going to do the same thing with the intake side. Pop that cam cap off. Watch for your dowel pins and then also there's a clip there that we want to make sure we grab. And now we can just remove the camshafts. Take the intake out first. And then we'll just remove the exhaust. And that cam chain will just hang there. So that'll reveal the buckets and then also give us access to the two other cylinder head bolts. And the next thing we need to do is just remove that radiator hose that runs to the cylinder head. I'm going to loosen the clamp and then just pull that hose off. And then we need to remove the ground wire that's run into the cylinder head as well. Just going to remove that bolt. And then there's two nuts holding the head to the cylinder that need to come off. So we'll just remove those. Once those are off, we're going to switch to the other side of the motor and remove the oil supply lines. There's three banjo bolts that hold this in place. So we're going to remove the top one because it's connected to the cylinder head. Once we get that banjo bolt out, don't forget that there's a copper crush washer that sits on both sides of that fitting. Keep track of those as well. And now we can start loosening our four cylinder head bolts. You want to loosen these in the crisscross pattern as well, like we did with the camshaft caps. And once we have all four of those loose, we can just remove those. Each of these bolts use a crush washer on bottom to seal. 
and a lot of times the two washers on the head bolts inside the cylinder head will stay sitting in there. So you want to make sure you get those out and make sure they don't drop into the bottom end of the motor. We used a magnet to do this. And once those are out, we're going to double check everything that was attached to the cylinder head make sure there's nothing else that's going to hold it up. We can go ahead and remove that cylinder head. Be cautious when removing it. We don't want to scratch any other surfaces and we don't want to drop anything into the bottom end. And now we can see our piston. The next thing we need to do is remove the cylinder. So we're going to remove that one bolt that's holding the cylinder down. Once that's out, we're going to remove our front cam chain guide. And after that's out of the way, we're just going to work the cylinder up off of the piston. Be careful not to scratch anything. We're going to drop that cam chain down through. Notice one of the dowel pins came off with the cylinder. We want to make sure we're keeping track of these so nothing gets lost. Then we're going to just quickly stuff a rag underneath the piston. We don't want anything dropping down into the motor as we're removing the piston. So then using our tusk circlip pliers, we're going to remove one of the circlips. That will allow us to push the wrist pin through the piston and then remove that wrist pin. Once that wrist pin's out of the way, we can just pull that piston right off the connecting rod. And then as you can see, one of our dowel pins stayed in the crankcase. We're just going to remove that just so it doesn't drop into the bottom of the motor and also so we can clean that gasket surface easier. And now's a great time to inspect our connecting rod. We're going to inspect the wrist pin hole for any sign of wear or scratches. And then we also want to check the connecting rod for play. A little side to side play is okay, but you don't want any up and down play. This connecting rod looks great, so we're just going to clean up the sealing surface with a little contact cleaner. We want to make sure we get any dirt or old gasket off of there. Once that sealing surface is clean, we're going to work on the bottom of the cylinder. We've still got a dowel pin in there, so we're going to remove that and set it with the other one. We're just going to pull the old gasket off. And then using a little contact cleaner and a razor blade, you want to be careful not to scratch the surface. You just want to scrape that old gasket off. So be cautious. And we're going to use a rag as well. But that contact cleaner does a pretty good job in removing the old gasket. Once that's done, we're going to move to the bottom of the cylinder head. Doing the same thing, just a little contact cleaner, razor blade. As you can see, we've got a clean sealing surface. So the next thing we're going to focus on is the cylinder. As you can see, this cylinder looks good. There's no scratches or other irregular wear, but we are going to hone it using our cylinder flex hone to remove any old carbon buildup or glazing that has occurred. You can refer to our cylinder hone video for further instructions. A few passes is all it takes and we're good to go. Honing gives you that consistent cross hatch as you see here, and that's going to help our new ring seat and help with oil retention as well. Rocky Mountain ATV MC carries a wide variety of piston kits to choose from. We also carry a variety of big bore kits, and that's what we're going to be installing on this bike today. The Cylinder Works Big Bore Kit comes complete with a top end gasket kit, your new piston kit, and a new cylinder. It's an easy bolt-on upgrade to any machine. Regardless of whether you're using your old cylinder or installing a new cylinder like in our case, you'll always want to wash the cylinder out with hot soapy water after it's been honed. Cylinder Works has already honed our new cylinder, so we're just washing it off. And then after it's been all dried off, you'll want to apply a light coat of oil or lubricant to prevent oxidation. And the next step is to check our ring end gap. The way you do this is take one of your piston rings and slide it down into the cylinder. We're going to use our piston to push it down a little more, but you want it at least 10 millimeters down into the cylinder. It's critical that the ring is sitting level in the cylinder as well. This will help us get an accurate reading with the feeler gauge. We'll do this with our compression ring and then both side rails for the oil ring. You'll want to refer to your service manual for recommended gap specifications, but it looks like our rings are in spec, so we're going to go ahead and install them onto our piston. We're going to install the oil ring first, which is a three-part ring, and the middle spacer ring is going to go on first. Make sure the two ends of this ring do not overlap in the groove. Next is the two side rails, and these rings are both the same. We just need to put one on top and one on bottom of that spacer ring we just installed. Once you get those on, it should look like this, with your side rails on top and bottom and the spacer ring in the middle. Now we're ready to install the compression ring. These rings will almost always have marks on one side of them, whether it be a number 
or a letter, or both as you see on this ring, it's critical that those marks are facing up when installing the ring. So we've got our rings installed, and this is how it should look. The last thing we need to do for the rings is position the ring gaps. For this we're going to refer to our service manual. It'll show you where to position the gap on each ring. So now our rings are ready, the last thing we're going to do to get this piston ready is install one of the piston circlips into one side of the piston. So we just rotate the clip up into place. You don't want to bend the circlip at all. And that does it for part 1 of this top end rebuild. Please refer to the part 2 video for assembly instructions. Rocky Mountain ATV MC carries a wide variety of engine parts, everything you need to rebuild your top end. Come check out our website, RockyMountainATVMC.com. And thanks for watching.